Hello and welcome to Gardening in 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my chili plants here and I'm also going to include uh, a new plant which is my tomato plant here. So I gave you an update just a few weeks ago but because I've got some new plants and because these two need separating I'm going to do another update video. So starting with this mature plant back here. Since you last saw it there hasn't been too much change to be honest. You can see it has put on a few more leaves, it's certainly starting to look a bit better now. That flower that was on it in the last video has been successfully pollinated and you can see there's a nice small chili forming. So I'm going to use this one to collect some seed. Elsewhere there's some nice growth coming on it and you'll notice that some of the growth has got some slightly larger leaves finally. So I might be lucky this might be coming out of its strange period where it wasn't really growing any stems. I really hope so because this is one of my, this is my favourite chili plant I've ever had. It's cropped really really well. I've never had one that's done as well as this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to take off all these flower buds. There's still plenty of them coming. I'm just going to keep doing that until the plant has hopefully recovered quite nicely and it's got a decent amount of leaves again. So my other chilies here, these two are the ones you've already seen, the Apache and the Piri Piri. The Apache is now ready to be separated. You can see the two plants are already quite big. They're starting to struggle for space. So I'm going to be separating those two in this video. And the Piri Piri one is just going to be kept in this pot for now. But you can see it's looking pretty healthy. The only downside I've had with these plants is a little bit of leaf curl. That's possibly due to a bit of um, just keeping the compost a bit too damp. Um, I'm not too sure, but um, that should grow out a bit. I'm not too worried about that at all. Shouldn't be a big issue. And as you can see, they've put on a lot of growth since the last video. So I'm going to introduce a new ch chili, sorry, a new pepper here. This is a sweet pepper. It's um, called Yellow Bell F1. You can see the. Uh, picture there, give you an idea of what it looks like. It's supposed to be a kind of quite large fruits, not the largest of, of uh, pep plant fruits, but quite large. Very, very thick wall to the um, the fruit, so it should be plenty of uh, edible material. Um, so it looks quite good, and it's an F1, so it should grow quite fast. I was trying to get some grafted plants. Um, the two garden centres near me don't currently have any grafted plants in stock. I'm hopefully going to get some later on. Either I'll have to order them online, um, or I'll get them from a different, different garden centre. So this this has done quite well. This sweet pepper is only about this height when I bought it. It's been shooting up and this will actually grow a lot bigger and more vigorous probably than these two. I find bell peppers, they're a lot bigger, more robust plant than uh, chilli peppers. So it'll be interesting to see how this does. And I'm hoping to get, as I say, some grafted pepper plants so I can compare a grafted plant with like an F1 hybrid and see how it does, see if it really is worth paying all that extra money to get a a grafted pepper plant. This one here, this is my new tomato plant. This one is the variety totem. You can just see there. Now I've grown totem before. To be honest, it's not the greatest of tomatoes. The only reason I bought it again is because it's a really small plant and I've got not got a lot of space and totem is one of the smallest plants you can get. Um, so I'm going to go for this plant again. But yeah, as I say, the, the, the actual tomatoes don't have a huge amount of flavour um, so if you're going in for nice tasting of tomatoes this isn't the one to go for and actually when I was in the garden centre most of them had really bad cold damage you can see there's a bit of cold damage on this one here you see they're kind of yellowing to the older leaves and this one as well the new growth is kind of growing out of that now because it's been in my flat for about a week so it's starting to look healthier but it really was badly affected you can see a lot of the plants that's because of the cold weather we've had recently so hopefully it hasn't stunted this one too much and it'll take off sooner start growing Last time I did grow a totem, I did have some problems where the leaves started dying later on. So I'll see how it does. I say it's been a, it's been a couple of years since I've grown tomatoes indoors. When I, I, I tend to find if I do grow tomatoes in my flat, they never do very well. Whereas if I grow them in a polytunnel or outdoors in a greenhouse, they do really well. So um, I don't have the highest of hopes for this, but I'll see. I've, I've got some grow lamps this year. I'll put it under grow lamps probably because I don't think there's quite enough space in my windowsills to have it on a windowsill. But um, yeah, we'll see how that does. So now I'm just going to go ahead and, and separate these two Apache plants. So I'm going to keep one in the original pot and the second one's just going to go into this other pot here. I'm just going to very carefully tease them apart, trying not to disturb the roots too much. The roots will be quite well congested together probably, but I'll see if I can tease them apart. So I'm just going to very carefully squeeze the compost here and start separating it. See if I can get these two plants separate without too much root damage. So that seems to be it there. I'm just going to very carefully put this one down. Pop this one 
inside this plant pot and the other one back in the original plant pot and then I'll just put in some new compost because as you can see there's only kind of like half half filled with compost I'm actually going to put a little bit of perlite in with this compost uh, just because they're big enough now that they can handle a bit of perlite for the drainage the um, perlite will just help open up the mix a bit the reason I didn't put perlite in the original uh, mix when I was sowing the seeds is because I find with the perlite if, if the seeds the seeds have very small roots and if a seed goes straight into a lump of perlite it's too free draining there's not any nutrients in it or much moisture and it will struggle so that's why I tend to have no perlite when they're, they're very young but as soon as they've got their first set of true leaves then I can go on and start using perlite in the mix that will really help because this mix otherwise is quite a heavy mix it's not, um, not not the greatest on its own, but with a bit of perlite, it does actually grow grow plants very well. So that should be about enough compost. It will sink down. It might look like I put in a little bit too much. That's because it's going to sink down when I water it. So that's it for this video. As I say, I'll keep, keep you guys updated with um, how many chilies do. Hopefully, these Apache will actually start flowering quite soon because they're dwarf varieties and they do tend to fruit very early on in their life. I'll give you guys an update, probably about a month's time, I think, this time. Unless they manage to get some grafted pepper plants, and then it could be a little bit less than a month. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys in the next update video.